Hi, my name is RJ Palacio and I am the author of Wonder. Um, Augie Pullman, August Pullman, is a 10-year-old boy who for all intents and purposes is an ordinary kid, uh, just like every other 10-year-old kid out there, um, except for the fact that he was born with this rather extraordinary face. He was born with a very severe craniofacial difference. Um, the word deformity is what other people use, but, but now having been part of this community, they prefer the term difference. Um, and he has been homeschooled his entire life uh, because his differences have made it necessary for, ha for him to have many medical procedures. And then um, in the fifth grade though, uh, when, when it's time for fifth grade, his parents decide that it's time for him to get out there. And um, so the book follows his journey from pretty much the first day of school in the fifth grade and ending pretty much in the last day of school in the fifth grade. And the reason I was inspired to write it really came out of a very very brief encounter I had with a little girl who was um, who looks just who looked just like Augie did in, in front of an ice cream store uh, and I was with my two kids and it was the way they responded to her especially my younger son who started to cry because he was afraid and the way I responded which was um, not really knowing what to do you know you kind of don't know whether you're supposed to acknowledge the situation whether you know what what you should do and I kind of panicked and and instead of um, Really what I should have done is just talk to the little girl and set an example and used it as a teaching moment for my children. To show them that there was nothing to be afraid of. Uh, instead I kind, of, I kind of tried to leave the scene as quickly as possible, which, which ultimately wasn't, didn't make me feel good and I imagine didn't make them feel good. So that got me thinking about what it must be like to, to have to face a world every day that doesn't know how to face you back. It was an extraordinary day because I obsessed about it a lot. And, uh, I obsessed more than anything about the way the mom responded as we were leaving. And again, by now my son, my three-year-old is crying. Um, it, it, was, it was more of a commotion than I would have liked. Um, the, I heard the little girl's mom say in as calm and sweet a voice as you can possibly imagine, okay guys, I think it's time to go. And she, I realized, you know, she, she'd gone through this a million times, you know, and, and it, it was really, um, it was very eye-opening for me. It was very heartbreaking. See how you would never forget that. It was a moment. It was a moment. I started writing a book that night. Wow. Yeah. writing I realized is, is so much it, you know part of it is invention of course and imagination all that but it, so much of it is extrapolation of, of what we all experience and even though I am not the mother of a child with a craniofacial difference and um, I haven't experienced that directly I still know what it's like to be the mother of a, of a sixth grader who's heartbroken about friends betraying him I still know what it's like to sit up, you know, uh, all night because your son has a high fever, you know, and, and these are experiences that are universal and every parent has gone through. And um, so tapping into that, but then extrapolating what it must be like to be the mother of a boy who has to face this world and, and be the sweetest kid he is. And he's sweet and he's funny and he's great. People don't give him a chance because of his face and um, what that must be like. So. It, it was kind of not that hard for me to ease into those characters and those, that, that feeling. I think all the way, you know, there's a, I think there's a Tolstoy quote that says, you know, scratch a Russian and you get a peasant wherever, something like that. I'm paraphrasing it, but I kind of feel, I don't know, maybe you do too, that in book publishing, you kind of scratch the surface of a lot of the people in marketing and editorial and whatever, and there's, there's a writer lurking underneath there. I mean, I think we're all in this because we love books. And maybe not everybody, but I know a lot of people that entertain writerly notions. And I was definitely one of them. I definitely um, wanted to be a writer someday. I just chose to make a career in, um, in graphic design and book publishing, doing book covers, because I thought it was something I could do for a living. And uh, so in the back of my mind, I'd always, I mean, and frankly, I'd been writing all along. Just nothing ever came to fruition, because I never really was motivated to finish any of the things I started. Um, but this was the first time that I thought, you know, this, this is a, I'm on, I think I'm on to something. I, I like the story and I'm going to finish it no matter what. You know, in this case it was, I had started the book and these characters kind of just 
it's, it's a very strange thing. They, came, they became very real to me very quickly and very well-rounded. And, um, and in a way, what happens when you create this world that no one else is privy to at, at, in the universe at this moment but you, you feel this responsibility to finish their story. And that had never happened to me. So I imagine that all those other books were worth not publishing and, and not seeing the light of day. But this one, I, I just felt this compulsion to finish their story because I was their voice. And, um, and I would write, you know, the only time I got to write was between midnight and three in the morning every night. And I did that for about a year and a half. And when I tell people that, they're like, oh my God, how, you know, how, weren't you tired? And I was, but it was also such, um, it was such a pleasure kind of revisiting that world every night. It was like a secret little world, and it was actually kind of extraordinary. I've been in publishing for 25 years, so I've been part of thousands, thousands of books being launched and, you know, and good books. And we know that the life cycle of most great books, you know, except for that 1% that makes it, um, you know, you, you expect maybe a month at the most out in the bookstore, spine out, maybe paperback a year later, and, and that's it. That's kind of what I expected. I, and I'm not just saying that, it, it's, it's what I'd always witnessed with rare exception. And um, again, the subject matter is a difficult one. Uh, people don't necessarily think they want to read a book about something, you know, they, I, I know because people have told me. My own editor admitted, that she, you know, it took her a while to read the book. It's, uh, you know, it's a subject matter and, and it's, it's, it seems like it'll be sad. Um, so I kind of thought, you know, if, if it gets published, if it gets published well, then maybe it'll get some nice reviews and it'll have a life in paperback someday. But uh, what's happened has far exceeded anything even I could dream of and I can dream so big. It's beyond anything. It's a funny thing because I'm still doing so much work for Wonder and, and going to school events. Because that is, you do start feeling this responsibility to these kids who are so passionately in love with your book and your characters. And they're signing pledges to choose kind. And they're, you know, like you just told me about your son, Owen. You know, they're, they're, they're like evangelists for the book. I call them Wonder Evangelists because they're, they're, they're just they want it to be spread and yeah. it's um, I feel this responsibility to these kids who are so awesome and who are choosing kind and I go to their schools and I, I try to partake in as much as possible with them Skyping and, and all of that I think it is happening already and I have nothing to do with it which is really the most amazing thing the wristbands the badges the pledges the murals, those have all been happening in schools all across the country, and I have nothing to do with it. I find out about a few of them because people tweet pictures or, you know, they send me emails, but that's what's been so extraordinary. I had two girls show up at an event. They had made t-shirts for themselves that said, choose kind. Um, you know, they, it, it's, uh, you know, someone had said, oh, you know, there are merchandising opportunities here. You know, I think uh, someone had said to my agent, you know, and I thought, I, uh, no, I, I think if someone wants to print a t-shirt that says choose kind or wonder or anything, go for it, you know, spread the word on your own, above and beyond selling the book, you know, and, and in a way that, that is a lot of what I've been doing. When I promote the book, I am also, you know, I go into these schools and I, I talk to them about this whole notion of choosing kind, you know, and, and, um, and having... I mean, I, it, it's, again, it's, it's amazing when you're talking to a 10 or 11 or 12 year old and you tell them, you know, you, you have the power to not just make someone's day, but to change someone's life with a kind word, with, you know, kind thought or a gesture. Um, and consequently, you also have the power to really be remembered for being a jerk. I mean, do you, do we, do you have the choice. Which do you want?
deserve a standing ovation for the writing wonders.